Okay, so in this video, we're basically going to be talking about the second part of implicit differentiation. Um, this is referred to as the concept of implicit rates, and it's uh, similar to implicit differentiation, but um, it differs by um, a general concept. So what I'm saying is, um, we try to apply the rules that we've learned in um, the implicit differentiation topic, and we try to find applications, uh, real life, life applications, and try to apply the rate concept to that and rate as we uh, know we've talked about in detail a uh, rate refers to the rate of change of any particular variable with respect to another variable right so dy by dx and uh, dx by dy right uh, we've talked about so many different instances in the last video so the idea is that this variable is changing with respect to that variable right so dy by dx represents a change in y and a change in x uh, we've tried to um, prove that through various examples as well. So what I'm saying is, um, we can apply this to lots of different variables. So all this means, dz by dy means that you're basically differentiating z with respect to y, and uh, dz by dt means that you're differentiating with respect to t. Uh, the idea is that uh, once you're doing that, uh, you've got different variables, right? You need to get into it into your head that all these represent are different variables. Sometimes, if you think about it for a second, um, it might not make um, a lot of sense, right? But if you try to visualize these variables as uh, physical constraints, as values holding importance, like z could represent the height of a particular person, right? And t could represent uh, the time, right? And dz by dt, dt is basically measuring the change in height of that person with respect to time. I mean, it doesn't really make sense if you think about it physically, but I mean, if you take a real life example, right, we could simply model this by the growing age of a person to somebody who's taller, basically. It's not really a very good drawing, but I'm pretty sure you guys do get the point. The idea is that the height of the person is increasing uh, with respect to time, right? So if I were to plot this kind of thing, it would be similar to this situation. This is a very um, uh, mediocre example, um, and uh, we're going to be talking about different, more advanced examples that, that, are, that are probably going to make more, much more sense than this case. Okay, so if we were to try to explain this using the chain rule, this would turn out to be uh, a differential with respect to x on what exactly? Um, well, there's a function g of f of x that's going to be achieving this, right? And uh, this can be expressed as basically the differential of g, which is the outer element with respect to y, and then differentiating dy by dx. So what, what I'm essentially saying is that we are using um, a common term that's going to be differentiated uh, with respect to each variable. So there's a common term y over here that we're first differentiating g with respect to and then we're differentiating that variable with respect to x, the value that's inside the function. So this is this can be thought of as a, a composition of a function, right? So we've talked about that, but this more um, if you think about it on a general on a high level this represents the chain rule and the chain rule is precisely this over here and it can this is basically the chain rule that can be applied to two or more variables so we can basically uh, derive an equation using this chain rule by uh, considering three specific variables so if i did want to find uh, dy by dx right so i'm going to talk about a situation in which this is going to be helpful what if i have dy by dt Right, I have a value for dy by dt and I have a value for dx by dt. So if I have these two values, is there any particular way I can use these two particular values to find dy by dx? Well, there is a way. So what I do is I write what I want to find on the left hand side, right? And what I do over here is simply take the denominator, uh, take the numerator in this case, which is dy, and write the term I know which is related to dy. So the term over here would be dy by dt, right? If you think about it, right? Because we're trying to get this numerator over here. We're trying to get this entire term, but we're going to get to the dx part later. First, I'm going to be dealing with dy. Now, dy by dt times something has to give me dy by dx, right? So what I, I have the value of dx by dt right now. What if I were to flip this value? I would get dt by dx. So that would be one over two, right? DX, uh, dx by dt is two and dt by dx would be one over two. So let's see if this equation is actually working out. If you, if you like, take a look at this, the dt's are cancelling out, right? So all you're left with is dy by dx, which is exactly what we want over here. So we can re-express dy by dx in terms of the chain rule using this equation over here. And this is going to be very helpful to you guys. You might have uh, an equation, right? You might have two different equations that are given in terms of t, right? And uh, you might have to find uh, the related rate 
that is dy by dx basically through the rates dy by dt and dx by dt so that's a very important concept this is an extension of the chain rule and the implicit differentiation as well that we talked about in the previous video but if we have a problem over here let's talk about a particular example so suppose that i have a particle that moves along the ellipse that has the equation x divided by a whole squared plus y divided by b whole squared equals 1. So basically the particle's movement can be modeled by this equation. All that means is that any for any particular x, y for the particle, right? So if this is a curve like this, I'm just drawing a random curve which is not at all how the ellipse looks like, but I'm just going to draw a general concept uh, and explain to you what is actually happening. So what it's what this equation is saying is that the particle's movement is de defined by the graph you're getting by plotting this. So this is an ellipse, kind of looks like um, this, right? But um, the idea is that the particle kind of moves along this and only along this, according to this particular equation, according to the values a and b, right? Of course, that could change, but the only movement the particle is going to make is would be along the boundary of this, and that's defined by this equation over here. So why are we even talking about this so what do we need to find well basically let's talk about what we've like just written down right so we are considering the position x y of the particle right and we decide that this is differentiable with respect to t right which is which is a function of time so with respect to time we could measure the movement of the particle right and uh, we know that x and y are differentiable functions in this particular case because x can be differentiated and y can be differentiated and we know this kind of equation is very similar to implicit differentiation examples that we've talked about earlier right so what uh, should we do now so basically let's just suppose that when time equals zero right the particle is at the point x naught v naught so that could be the initial position of the particle on the ellipse but that's not it let's also assume that the differential of y with respect to zero at the point zero would be equal to 1. So basically the rate of change of y at the point 0 is turning out to be 1. So that's basically dy by dx at the point, computed at the point, 0, right? So what now? We have an equation with us, right? Um, let's try to solve this problem. Let's try to find um, x dash 0 and y dash 0. But let's, uh, before that, let's just implicitly differentiate this and uh, we can get a better idea of what's going on. So let's differentiate this entire equation with respect to and we've uh, talked about that in the previous video. We've differentiated with respect to x, but this is going to be slightly different. So let's just write out the equation first before we can move towards the differentiation. So with respect to t, would perhaps look something like this, right? And that's being differentiated with respect to, sorry, with respect to t as well. How does that look like? That's t by dt. I should probably light one on the other side because that's a a better representation so we're gonna have to differentiate this with respect to t differently uh, like individually and then do the same for that so if we differentiate this with respect to t what's going to happen first we're going to have to apply the power rule how is the power rule going to work out basically the power is going to come over here right and we're going to write x over a something that's inside the bracket as it is and we're going to decrement the power by one right and when we do that what's going to happen after that so but after we're done with the decrementation right um uh, we basically differentiate whatever's inside the bracket, right? So x divided by a has to be differentiated. But think about it for a second. What's going to happen when we differentiate um, x divided by a? So let's just leave out the constant. Let's not think about that right now. But if we differentiate x with respect to a variable that's not x, we're going to have to differentiate this regularly, and that's going to give us a 1. But we have to multiply that by dx by dt as well because the basically the differential over here is not the same as what's in the denominator right so with i'm differentiating with respect to dt if dt were dx if i were differentiating with respect to dx then we'll get dx divided by dx and the terms will kind of cancel out right but in this case that is not going to happen so what we get over here is dx divided by dt right and that so dx by dt that's what we get over here right and let's try to uh, differentiate the second part now and we're going to do the exact same thing right y divided by b right and 2 minus 1 and then uh, basically the inside part is going to be um, divided right by whatever's inside so that's going to give us 1 over b right outside because that's differentiating with respect to t and then we'll get um, well dy by dt and I just missed one tiny detail over here that's going to be 1 divided by a because that's what the differential of that gives us. So if we try to kind of like simplify this, what do we get? We get 2 times uh, x divided by a squared times dx by dt. And we get plus uh, 2 times y divided by b squared, right? And that's multiplied by dy by dt and this is equal to 0. Uh, what you guys 
could use over there by the way uh, could use as an alternate to x uh, d by x by dt and dy by dt is x prime of t and y prime of t so basically functions in terms of t that are differentiable right with respect to t so that could be an alternate form so what what i'm trying to do over here is basically express one form in the other right i could want to find like x prime zero i could try to find y prime zero so the, the, like those are like a few of my options right now so what do i do like if i have x prime of t over here um this is x prime of t right and that's y prime of t so let's take everything to the right hand side and find x prime of t so x prime of t stays here as we can observe over here this is going to be moved to that side so we're gonna on the other on the other side basically what we're getting is minus 2y by b squared times y prime t right and this has to be multiplied by this entire part but it's going to be like uh, the reciprocal right so we'll get the reciprocal of that so this is one form in which we can kind of represent it so let's do it in a neater way so that it's understandable so if it could be re-expressed as x prime of t equals minus 2y uh, but so actually the 2 is basically going to cancel out so I don't even need to write that out it's going to be a lot simpler for me um, so minus y times a squared divided by x times b squared times y prime t right is that it yeah basically that's it but there's another thing we can uh, convert this entire thing to we could just simplify x and y and we have a minus sign here right instead of doing that why don't we write y of t and x of t because that's pre precisely the thing right when we're differentiating with respect to t the variable turns into uh, a variable that's in terms of t right so if we're differentiating so the term inside x has to be in terms of t so that is kind of like implied over here so according to what i uh, began with we have a boundary condition over here that's equal to y prime zero one right and we can perhaps use this by just plugging in a zero in terms of uh, in the place of t right so we're going to get at x prime zero equals minus y zero divided by x zero and that's going to be multiplied by x square or b square and then we're going to get y prime of zero over here and we can replace that by one right as we've observed over here um we know that the initial position of uh, the particle is x naught y naught right and that's e at time equals zero because that's the initial time when time is going to be zero that's going to be the initial case right that's when the particle hasn't moved at all and that's its initial position we're going to use that over here because this is y zero and x zero right so what we are getting over here is minus y naught divided by x naught times a squared over b squared right and think about this for a second we're going to get x prime of zero over here so what this is essentially is giving you is x prime of zero the rate of change of the variable x at the point zero when t equals zero with respect to t right and that's represented by minus y naught over x naught which is the initial position times a squared over b squared so it kind of gives you a relationship right so it's not um uh that difficult to understand what it's saying is that at the time uh, when time equals zero the particle rate of change in the x direction is going to be equal to this this exact equation over here I have one more example that I want to do. I'd uh, like to shift that to the next video. So hopefully I'll be seeing you guys there.